Hi guys, this is my project on the Holly Hobby um, bonnet and I've already done the Holly Hobby pantaloons. Um, this complete costume has, has a few different pieces to it. So I'm really happy that I've created two so far. It's, it's been quite, quite a project so far. Um, and this is the fabric that I'm using for the bonnet. And it's the same fabric that I used for the pantaloons. And I think the blue with the little flowers is um, just perfect for, for this costume. So these are the instructions and we're making the, the bonnet and I, I love how it has little pictures to help you along. Um, and this is the bonnet back lining. So the first challenge is to do some darts and I've already done the, the darts just by putting my pen through the, the fabric. And I should warn you guys that I think this um, particular pattern is more for the advanced sewer. Most of the sewing that I do can be done by a beginner, um, and it only has um, a couple of a couple of stitches. But this one is a little little more advanced. So if you're beginning, or if you are a beginning sewer, be patient with yourself because you'll have to do a a little bit of learning how to how to do um, some things that you maybe have not done before, such as darts. So what I've done is I've um, placed um, some, some dots um, and now I'm drawing a line just to make it really easy. Um, so, I, so I create a really nice looking dart. And now we're just going to start sewing. So what I'm doing is a straight stitch and then I, for my next stitch, I go over the, the very last stitch. Um, this will create a, a strong, a strong seam. And I keep on snagging my my fabric, <laughs> and that's because I use some pinking shears um, on all the edges of of the fabric, um, just so the ends don't fray. So you might be experiencing that yourself if you're also using some pinking shears. And one last stitch, 
just to just to make sure it goes all the way to the edge. And that's how it's going to look. It comes out looking pretty nice. All right, now we need to do some gathering. So we're going to do a, a stitch and stop right there and then start it again over on the other side. So I put a, a row of clips really close together just so I would remember that I need to stop sewing. So um, I always hate to have to undo stitches. So I try to try to give myself some really good visual aids. <laughs> And this stitch is the same as before. It's just a straight stitch and I always go over the very last stitch um, with the with the next stitch just to just to give it a, a little a little more um, more strength. So this is the part where we're actually doing some gathering. So this is a basting stitch. Um, the big difference is I'm not going over any of the stitching that, that I did um, like in the other, other stitches that I've done. Um, and that's because these stitches um, just have to be big and they just need to be um, just need to be gathered just a little bit. And we're starting to actually put together some of the pieces. So I've clipped the, the two pieces together. And that's what it looks like when it's all sewn up. It's starting to look like something. <laughs> so now we need to do a bit of bit of gathering here. So that this long piece can can fit in that in that on top of that smaller piece. So again, we're just gonna go crazy with the clips, <laughs> doing a lot of gathering, and then just clip them together. So one of the very nice things about these clips is they measure about half an inch. So it's really, really easy just to use the clips as a guide and you'll get a, a half an inch seam out of it. So I do, I do like, the, <laughs> like the measurement that it, that it gives me.
And this stitch is going to go a little bit slower um, because you're having to go through several layers of cloth. So just be patient with your with yourself. Um, if you're new to sewing on on sewing up some some gathered material, um, you just got to know that you're gonna do it just the the best that you can, and you try to keep your stitches really straight. Um, even even when you're kind of kind of struggling to to push the needle the needle through all of that fabric, so um, be kind to yourself if if you're a, a beginning sewer, um, and just just know that you're doing the best that you can, and if you have to go really slow, that's okay. So we've got everything all gathered up. And here's the bonnet, the bottom <laughs> of the of the bonnet. So we're starting to pin the interfacing and I've already I've used the clips on the interfacing and I did iron down the interfacing just a little bit um, because it was it was folded down the middle so I was trying to get rid of that by doing a little a little bit of ironing and I'm using a larger needle for that for the interfacing um, much larger than my normal um, tiny needle and I do recommend um, something to protect your fingers just to make it easier on yourself so get out your thimble if if you got one you might save yourself a little bit of pain so this interfacing it if you've never used an interface before um, it's it's like a really stiff um, sheet of cotton <laughs> And it's a little, little bit harder to, to push your needle through. And this stitching is just to, just to keep the, um, the interfacing um, attached to, to one of the. Um, one of the sides of the fabric. So this is a very temporary kind of kind of stitch. So you don't need to go over um, any of your stitches. Um, your stitches just need to be just need to last as, as long as it, it takes you to to um, to work with the interfacing and get the get the other piece attached. So don't don't worry if your stitching is not is not pretty. Um, you can make the stitching a little bit wider than than usual. It's just gonna keep it in place while you're while you're working on on the next step. So you're welcome to do this as slowly as you like and do protect your fingers with the thimble. <laughs> All right, here's what it looks like um, when my stitching is done. It's all along the edge. And that's what it looks like on the reverse side. And now what we're doing is we're just evening, evening up the um, the interface and the and the fabric. So the stitching isn't isn't just to keep the fabrics the different pieces together. Um, it also gives us a, a guide so we can so we can even everything up. Um, like I like I said, the clips measure a a half inch in so it's a pretty good pretty good measurement 
um, for doing this part of the work. And just go as slow as you can and make sure you're not clipping any of the any of the um, <laughs> the work that you did with the with the stitching so um, if it seems like I was going a little bit slow that was that was why <laughs> just want to be really careful not to have to redo some work now we've got both sides of the of the fabric pinned together So you, you've got one layer of fabric, um, a layer of interface, and then you've also got a, um, a layer of other fabric. So um, again, use your, use your big needle just so you don't have any issues pushing it through. And do grab your thimble, it'll save your fingers some aches. If you're a younger person, you might not care too much about the aches. Um, but for some of us, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna say older people, <laughs> people that might be um, might have 20 or 30 years of, of sewing behind us, maybe more. Um, your 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 fingers do do hurt a little bit more as as you age. So um, thimbles are not my favorite thing to wear. I think they're they're sweaty and uncomfortable and. It, they don't quite feel right to me, so um, I really dislike having to get them out, but it does save my fingers some, some aches. So um, if you're hesitant, um, definitely just get out your thimble and just, just know you don't have to wear it all the time just for this, um, for this particular work with the, with the interfacing. It'll, It'll really save you some, some aches. So um, these days I'm all about saving myself some aches. <laughs> all right, now I've got all the stitching done. And that's how it looks on the other side. So now we are, um, we're doing the unthinkable. We're, um, using our scissors and we're just going to be cutting off the um, the initial stitching that that we did um, and that's so we can um, easily um, turn this turn this brim so it so it looks correct So here's what it what it looks like when I've flipped over the the fabric. And we're just going to do some some stitching here just to keep um keep the keep the layers together um as we as we attach it to the rest of the bonnet. And don't worry about all the raw edges that you're seeing. Um, in the next couple of steps, we are going to be dealing with that and making them really pretty. <laughs> and 
and I'm sewing about a fourth inch seam right now. I want to give it get it as as close to the edge as possible, um, but I don't want to go to the edge. So a fourth a fourth inch seems like a pretty pretty good measurement for for this step. Here it is, brim, it's all sewn up and it does have some raw edges, but don't worry about that. And I did iron the brim um, before I started attaching it, just because that's probably the last chance I would get to, to do some ironing um, with the with the brim being, being a flat piece. Because when you start sewing it, it's gonna be a curved piece as it, as it attaches to the rest of the hat. So I figured better sew it while while it's flat and um, yes you can you can iron it once everything's together but I figured if it's flat it's gonna be really easy to iron and it is gonna curve a bit while we're um, while we're gathering and, and sewing. And I am struggling just a little bit with all of this gathering. And I'm trying to do an invisible kind of stitch here. I want to um, cover the, the brim as much as possible, um, making sure the, the fabric is, is covering the, the stitches um, that are underneath. And this is purely my choice to try and do an, an invisible kind of kind of stitch. Um, I think if you can hide your stitches, um, the the better. And I think it just looks a lot nicer if if you know you don't have to look at some look at some stitches. <laughs> and I did have to use some straight pins for this. I started off trying to use the clips, um, but they just did not stay in place at all. And I was just fighting with them so much. So we've got some stitches that, that you, can, you can see. Um, so I'm gonna do my best to, to make sure the, the fabric is gonna cover those stitches. You're kind of like a, a magician trying to trying to hide your your magical tricks. <laughs> All right, now we are stitching um, up the bonnet ties. So I've done a straight stitch um, along, along one of the edges, and I'm just gonna do another straight stitch. And after this stitch is done, we're gonna turn it inside out. And this is gonna be the, the bottom of your tie. Um, so do make, make sure you get this as, as straight as possible because it's gonna be really obvious if your stitches are, are not straight. So I think situations like this, the clips come in really handy to, to make sure it's a, 
it's a good measurement. And I like to tie a couple of knots at the, at the end. Now here's the part where we have to turn it inside out. I often dread this this particular um, part of any project because it's it's slow and time consuming and there's just no quick way to do it. So you just have to kind of be patient and you're just gonna start pulling at the fabric just to just to get it all to to turn the opposite way of, of what you've been doing. <laughs> So just be patient with yourself if this is the first time that you've ever um, had to turn a fabric inside out. You might be just, you know, doing it an inch at a time. But do be patient with, with yourself and, and the fabric. And just keep going and Eventually, you'll start to feel like it is never going to get there. It is never going <laughs> to come out. Um, and then, surprise, it'll, it'll just be done. So just keep working at it. Oh, and we're almost there. And at the very end, you're just gonna wanna try and um, try and get as much of the fabric um, out as possible. We're we're aiming aiming for a a square looking looking tie at the bottom. So just try and pull out as much of the fabric as you can. And you'll be doing these very same steps on the other tie as well. So this is the other end. And this end we're just gonna just gonna tuck it down just just a little bit probably about a half inch or so. And this end is going to be hidden. Um, inside the bonnet so nobody is going to see your stitches <laughs> so what I'm doing is just a, a loop kind of stitch just creating a really a really strong stitch to to keep the 
the fabric pieces where they belong. And these stitches are going to be hidden inside the bonnet, so they won't even be visible. So if you're not doing the most beautiful stitching, um, don't worry about it. You are the only one who's ever going to see it. So um, take take care if, if you're if you're criticizing your your stitches. Um, if they're not tiny, if they're not perfect, no worries. This is the last time you're going to see these stitches. So just keep going. And here is where we're going to be attaching the ties. So they're going to be hidden kind of inside the, the bonnet so nobody is going to see them at all. And now we just need to do some stitching just to adhere them to the bonnet. And this is the underside of the bonnet, um, the part that, that only you is going gonna, is gonna to see. So don't worry about your stitching. Just make sure it's a good and, and sturdy stitch that's um, going to keep it in place. So we've got that stitching already done and I'm actually going to do another stitch right below it. 
my thought is I didn't want to put too much pressure on on one on one side of the of the bonnet tie. I figure if you put too much pressure, you you might um, end up um, ripping a seam over over time if you put too much pressure on one side. So just to just to be sure, um, it's a it's a really sturdy stitch. I figure that the ties are probably going to get the most wear and tear. Um, the rest of the bonnet is just going to be placed on top of your head and um, there's not much not much pressure on on the on the actual bonnet um, but the but the ties they're they're gonna get a little a little more more pressure and I never want to redo stitches <laughs> try to avoid doing mending <laughs> especially for something that I've that I've made myself I figure if I buy something from the store, you know, it might be made in a fast fashion kind of industry, um, not by a, a careful sewer or tailor. So I, I, I expect to have to mend some items that I buy from the store, but um, if I'm making it myself, I, I want to make some, some really good stitches that I'm not going to have to redo. So that's what's that uh, saying? Uh, a stitch in time. <laughs> you might spend a couple of more minutes creating a very sturdy stitch, um, but you're you're really certain that it's gonna it's gonna last the test of time, and you're not gonna have to redo your work. And here is the finished bonnet. I'm really happy with um, how it how it turned out. Um, I hope you guys en enjoyed this video, and um, thank you for watching. And please like and subscribe. And I will see you guys next time.